With the release of 4.5, Blender is getting a ton of improvements. Vulkan is fully releasing and providing speed increases across the board, a compositor overhaul that is long overdue has been implemented, EV improvements, and new nodes and geometry nodes. It's probably one of the biggest updates for Blender in recent times. But that's not what I'm here to talk about today. If you didn't know, Blender 5.0 is actually already in development and you can go download it right now. And you might want to because it's already getting crazy. The first thing I want to talk about is the thing that's probably the most interesting to me, which is of course the new nodes for Geometry Nodes. Once you've downloaded 5.0, you can go to Edit Preferences and head to the Experimental tab where you'll see new Volume Nodes and Bundle and Closure Nodes, both of which are really exciting new features. Starting with the Volume Nodes, these allow us to manipulate VDBs in a way that we've never been able to do before in Blender. For instance, let's say I have this smoke sim that I've exported as a VDB and re-imported into a new project, but I want to add just a bit more detail to it. Normally, in this case, we'd have to re-simulate the entire thing, but no longer. With the new nodes, I can sample the grid from the VDB I exported based on the position with a bit of noise thrown in. This adds extra detail basically for free without having to go through the long process of re-simulating. You can also take this one step further by advecting the noise by the velocity grid of the VDB to get even better results, but we won't get into that right now. There's a ton of other stuff you can do with this, like the things showcased in this default cube video, but my favorite thing is we can now make VDBs interact with other physics simulations in geometry nodes. Here, I have my particle simulation set up in a cube, and I want this VDB to push it. All I have to do is sample the velocity grid from the VDB and multiply by the time step. Then, since I'm using position-based dynamics in the simulation, I can just offset the position of the particles directly, and boom! The particle sim is now interacting with the smoke sim. I've also found I get better results when scaling the sampled velocity by the density of the VDB. This is huge because it doesn't just apply to basic particle simulations. With a solver like XPBD, we can expand the implementation to simulate cloth, soft bodies, or other phenomena, and the logic for having them interact with volumes stays virtually unchanged. The next thing I want to talk about are the bundles and closures I mentioned earlier. These are a huge step in making geometry nodes more versatile and are going to be great additions as geometry nodes replaces things like the built-in particle simulations and rigid bodies. As you saw earlier with my particle simulation implementation, and probably with others in the past, we already have the capabilities to make a pretty decent implementation of certain solvers, but bundles and closures are likely the next step in making this a reality in base Blender. They're both basically just ways of transferring data to different areas of the node group. Closures are what I think are the most exciting. In short, they turn node groups into a socket type. If I have a node group where the inside is just a simulation zone to keep it simple for demonstration, I can put an evaluate closure node inside the simulation zone and plug that in as an output. I can now make a closure zone outside the node group and put whatever I want in here. Say an extrude node. This node will now be packaged and sent inside the node group where it will then be evaluated every frame because of the simulation zone. This is a major improvement to the user experience when it comes to large simulations. If you take this node for example, this has tons of inputs and panels and looks pretty overwhelming. It's also hard to fully customize this, as the more customizability you want to add, the more sockets and clutter you have to add. With closures, I can separate this whole thing out into multiple different node groups, each with its own closures, which will then be evaluated at runtime. This means that basically anything can be hot swappable and customizable. If I want a different emitter, say, I just swap out this mesh emission node group for one I made with volume emission. Or I want to change the forces that are applied to the simulation. I can swap those out as well. I can also chain closures inside of other closures so that they're all combined into one, and then we can just remove and add more as needed. This might look a little complicated, but it allows for so much freedom. Bundles are similar in that they allow you to pass an arbitrary amount of data into a node group through just one socket, but it won't be evaluated like a closure. These nodes are quite complex and will likely only be used by toolmakers such as myself, but they are a big step in improving the user experience with pre-made node groups and will let you engage with them in a much simpler way. Now, these nodes aren't guaranteed to make it into 5.0, as they're still very experimental, but they're getting to a point where they're pretty usable, as you've seen in this video. There are other things already in 5.0 that I haven't mentioned yet, like improved subsurface scattering that you can learn more about in this video, even more compositor improvements, and a lot of great UI changes. Overall, the future of Blender is looking very bright, but as an open source program, they do often run into funding issues. So if you make money with Blender and have some to spare, I would encourage you to go and donate to the Blender Foundation to keep them doing the amazing work that they do. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you learned something, and have a great day.